It's uh, live. Testing. I don't know if it's working. One, two, three. I, I don't know. I'm going to go check on the computer. Be entertaining. I'll, be right back. I'll tell him that joke I know. Yeah, tell him that joke you know. How do you know if um, somebody's watching? They should tell us on the side. They got an eyeball with a one next to it. All right. Is that you on your computer over there? I don't know how you got on there. I, uh, I think we're the only ones watching. We might be. The nice thing is we're recording this evening so we can share it later. Oh, so I shouldn't be making uh, obscene hand gestures? No, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you could. It's just going to be immortalized on film forever. I don't have anything immortalized on film I'm ashamed of. I stand I by, stand by everything, everything I've ever said. Don't finish just my sentences on broadcast. It looks weird. You mean like the way I order you breakfast? Well, you used to be able to order me breakfast. I think oh, time's, yeah, because you suddenly expanded your power. Times change. I get something different every time now. Do that. Life's too short. You just do that to throw me off. No, I do it because I like change. I embrace it. What, what, is, what do you like to get now? Um, I'm been digging. Um, what do you call them? What do you call when you take all the breakfast and you put it in one plate? Skillet. Skillet. What's what I like to get? Skillets. Oh, Skillets are awesome. Um, I like that it prompts uh, in the chat. It says, "Say something nice." <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't want people to just talk garbage to us. But we shouldn't swear on this, right? For the kids. Um, no, I would try to avoid swearing if possible. You know, we tried to do that on the podcast for a while. Swearing? Yeah, we weren't going to swear at first, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then we let Omi on the show. <laughs> and it was like the third or fourth week. And then we had to add an explicit filter. And then something like changed in me. <laughs> and I, I swear every episode, I can't help it. Well, good news. The live broadcast is working. Steven, hey, watching. three people are watching. Well, I'm watching. If you go to the left side of the screen. You mean the right side? It says like live cast on Facebook. You should do that or want to test it. Facebook Live. Beta. Let everyone know we're testing. We're about to start. Send this edit. broadcast to Facebook Live. Note the video stream will be delayed about 15. Oh, awesome. We'll have 15 seconds to catch any mistakes. Everyone watching, just so you know, we're getting set up. We need another 60 seconds or so. Um, I told my mom she better be watching. I think our mothers might be the only ones, but that's all that matters. <laughs> all right, going to set up the simulcast on Facebook. My mom's going to be like, I missed it. You got to send me the tape. <laughs> you know, she might be watching. Be nice. Yeah. I'll, hey, I got nothing but nice things to say about my mother. All right. Just testing a Facebook Live. Um, fetching video stream. Oh, it's 8 o'clock. We're late. Two people are watching. We lost the viewer. There is a 15 second delay. It looks so weird. We look so weird. <clears throat> if you don't come back here and tell these nice folks that are watching, uh, I'm going to just start reading out of um, Ultimate X Men Volume 3. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love it if you were dead. By Mark Millar. Just I hear uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Have you heard this? Is being considered for the role of Mysterio. Oh yeah, about time we get Mysterio in Spider-Man Two. Yeah, it's about time we get a Mysterio in one of these movies. Actually. Yeah, he's great. He better be a knuck though. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be the main villain, but he's also got to be like. He can't be a threat. He should be a joke. Where's Craven? Two seconds, everyone. If somebody comes up with like a crazy thing, they're like, "I want a, a, a magnet for my car." Do we do we then add that to the? I mean, maybe to if, the they, if they request stuff. All right, everyone, we're ready to get started. Um, don't mind me because I'm live tweeting along with us uh, here. Um, I'm Carmelo Camara. I'm Stephen Brown. And uh, together we're Camara's Comics. Uh, we want to thank you for coming to our first live broadcast uh, here tonight. We've got some uh, um, 
tricks up our sleeve for you here. Uh, I know Steven's internally rolling his eyes at me because he just found out we were doing this like 10 seconds ago. Yeah, he springs a lot of stuff on me. <laughs> in fairness, I did put it all over the internet. So. Yeah, I don't go on the internet anymore. <laughs> I'm, uh, this is my only, this is my Facebook quota for the, for the month. Right. So, um, I want to thank everyone who's watching, taking the time to watch uh, I'm do a couple things tonight. One, um, we're running this Kickstarter campaign, uh, in, in part to help improve the comic book stores because Kickstarter is not just about raising money. It's about connecting with your community. So we wanted to take the opportunity to tell you some of the plans we have for Canaris Comics as well as to hear your questions and your thoughts. We want to give you the comic book store that you want, right? Uh, what we want only matters a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I love them more than a little bit. I think uh, we're lucky enough to uh, want a lot, I think, of what most people want in a comic book store. And I think we've been lucky enough to find people that come to our store that uh, like the same things or are interested in the same kind of things that we are. We've been very fortunate uh, with our community and uh, uh, all the relationships we've built in the community. Um, and But I, I, it's, uh, I like and I enjoy that it, it appears that a lot of people like the same stuff I like because that's what we built the store around. As, we, as, as much as we talk about wanting to uh, kind of service what we think the community is, there's a, definitely a lot of that. But I think it's we try to build the stores to be what we believe uh, or want like a comic book store to look like. And it's refreshing and a bit surprising to see that kind of reflected back to us by the reception we get in the community from um, all the customers and friends we've got uh, coming out to support us every week. Yeah, and I think the the Kickstarter campaign is a, is a chance where we really see just how much we do mean to the community because I think a lot of times we do things, it feels like we're, you know, just shouting out into the vacuum and we're not sure what's going to hit. Um, but then when you do a, something like a Kickstarter and you physically see, you know, dozens and dozens of people come together to support an idea, that's when you get a sense of what community is really worth. Yeah, it's a little weird. Like we, uh, you know, we do the podcast every week and it literally <laughs> is probably us just shouting out into the void every week. Um, the Kickstarters specifically are, uh, very humbling cause, um, it, it's like every time we do these things, I'm like, yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> no one, no one cares who we are. No one's going to give us any money. And then every time we do it, we get people give us money and, you know, uh, kind of believe in us. And it's really kind of heartwarming to see. Um, yeah, you, you know, you don't think anyone cares or anyone's listening. And then people, you, there's no greater expression perhaps than people putting their money where their mouth is. And, uh, in Kickstarter, this is like twice now we've done it. And, um, uh, it, it projections say we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna make the goal. We're like 83% funded, which <laughs> is incredible. Actually, and, since we've started, we're now 91% funded. Yeah. So. And I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't mind being wrong about stuff, uh, uh, like this when it's kind of, it does kind of show that people really do care. Uh, and it's, uh, it's like I said, it's like a very uh, humbling, but a weird feeling, but it's, it's very cool. Yeah. We, uh, speaking of, we just got our first, uh, first comment, uh, on Facebook from Tom Faulkner, who is a member of our, uh, our growing Kickstarter Facebook group, the Camaris Comics Community Facebook group, which we started as a, as a group that is designed to recreate the conversations you get at a comic book store, but on Facebook, right? We go on there, we dork out about the movies we see or the new comics that are coming out, and we want to try to capture that, that essence. So um, that's where we made Tom's acquaintance. And uh, Tom commented here, I just wish it was my local comic shop because oh, that's awesome. Tom, like so many of the other um, members in the group, it's over a thousand members. Many of them come from all over the country. So uh, it's really neat to see that uh, what we're trying to put out in the world resonates really all over. Yeah. And generally uh, maybe Chicago's lucky um, in the sense where there's a lot of awesome, uh, we have a great comic community in Chicago and I think we're perhaps a bit lucky and there's like a, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I think specifically Chicago is lucky because we do have a lot of shops that kind of break the mold of like the, I don't know. It's like, it feels like it's kind of going the way of the dinosaur, like the creepy old guy running the store with like the folding table and the 
mountains of like back issue bins and stuff and you know uh no customer service and no engagement with customers and uh, uh we're we were part of that change or we were lucky enough to kind of ride the wave of that change uh that came to comic book stores in chicago and hopefully elsewhere um it's awesome it's it's a it's a wonderful feeling to be a part of like a positive change when young people can come into comic book stores and um you know, it doesn't matter who you are, you know, what you're into. It's like you can find a book that works for you or something you'll enjoy that doesn't look like um, you're just you're not going to get like the comic book guy from The Simpsons. It's like hopefully that's like a stereotype in a few years. People are going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like it's an it's an old stereotype. Speaking of friends we've made over the years, uh, shout out to Bob Grandstaff. Who's hey, watching hey, Bob, what's on up? Facebook. That's awesome. Bob's a friend we met when uh, we were teenage part-timers at uh, 10th Planet, yeah. which is where we where we met and where all this really kind of started. So, Bob, good to hear from you. Thanks for, for being on. We like yeah. it. Um, so now that uh, we have uh, – we're building up quite a bit of an audience already between uh, Facebook and Kickstarter. So uh, we wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to take the chance to talk to you a little bit about the Kickstarter campaign. Um, even Steven actually uh, has some I questions. I have so many questions because I don't know me. anything about it. Um, so I've run five Kickstarter campaigns. This is my second for Chimera's Comics. This is um, my fifth overall. I've raised over um, now close to $100,000 on Kickstarter between these these different campaigns. So I'm I'm pretty confident in my, in my Kickstarter knowledge. So I have all kinds of things that I've learned over the years that I wanted to to bring to bear for the Chimera's Comics community. So, uh, for example, uh, one thing that I want to experiment with this campaign that we never did before were add-ons, okay? Now, add-ons, like the other things we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to unveil throughout the campaign. We are going to do updates, and we're going to update the campaign page to do it. But the um, my, our thinking was, if you're watching us live, you're our number one fans, so we want to get, we want to spill the beans. We're going to give you all the goods now, and uh, and you know, and, and if you miss it, it's okay uh, because we will we will be revealing these as we go. But add-ons are uh, they're not an uncommon Kickstarter thing, but they're not a native part of the Kickstarter platform, right? So it's something that we do extra. We're partnering with a third-party service called BackerKit that's going to help us do these add-ons. And the way add-ons work is. Um, let's say you you bought one of our rewards. It was uh, you know the shot glass and the tumbler and the bottle opener, and that was you know twenty five dollars. And that's what you really wanted were those things. But you know if you could have had it your way, you would have also thrown in a hat, or maybe you want a second tumbler. Uh, maybe you want a second pint glass because you want a set. You know uh, instead of just one. Well, what add-ons are going to let you do are add-ons are going to let you add you know ten bucks, fifteen bucks, whatever it is to your pledge, and then get an extra item, right? Otherwise, we would end up with 10,000 different reward packages. We would never be able to make a package for everybody, right? And we couldn't, say, make the Tumblr one package and the T-shirt another package because Kickstarter doesn't work that way. Kickstarter lets you pick one uh, a one pledge tier. But add-ons are going to let you customize, right? So you can pledge at any level, and you'll be able to uh, add on and get what else that you want. So tomorrow we're going to reveal a menu that's going to have the different items that are available to you and uh, and prices. And you'll be able to increase your pledge. And at the end of the campaign, BackerKit will ask you what else you want. Now, the nice thing about BackerKit is uh, you'll have a whole like checkout experience. Um, so you'll be able to uh, uh, increase your pledge and customize your reward at the end. You don't have to increase your pledge now. You could. It'll help us hit our goal. It'll help us do a little bit better. Um, but you don't need to. You can wait, and at the end of the campaign, um, backer kit's going to say, "Okay, you pledged, you know, thirty-five bucks. You've got the shirt and the hat coming, and here's some other stuff." And you might say, "Hey, I want an extra shot glass. Hey, I missed out on Magnificent. I want to get a copy of of your hardcover." Uh, and then you'll just be able to tweak it a little bit. So you'll be able to get your reward your way. It's kind of like the McDonald's uh, uh, platform. Well, so, yeah, with the McDonald's of Kickstarter. <laughs> now, I know this is going to look kind of staged. It's not. Steven is is unfamiliar with some of these things that I'm doing. So he's sort of my, like, man of the people. And I'm not – it's not like a, like a cheap tactic when I say, did that make sense? Yeah. Do you have questions for me? That Because if you're wondering, and I'm sure folks at home are going to wonder what – I think it's pretty straightforward, and I think most people, uh, especially if you're watching us on Kickstarter or maybe familiar with, this seems like a pretty common tactic. 
I'd yeah, say as yeah, far as absolutely. Like, Add-ons are not are not unique to us. Yeah. So I think that's pretty all straightforward. Okay, that's good. That's good. So um, you know, as far as add-ons, add-ons are also hey Paul Figura's on too. Oh Paul, Paul, man, what is up, dude? Our old boss, Paul. He was uh, our old boss at 10th Planet. That's great. Um, so hey, it's good to hear from you, Paul. Uh, any guy, guys, anytime we want to ask a question in the middle of this, please ask it on Kickstarter, ask it, ask it here. You know, we've got a chat going, we've got a Q and a going. Um, you can also get us on, on Twitter. I'm checking periodically. So I hope you don't mind. Um, but, uh, in any case, the add-ons will be revealed tomorrow. And the add-ons are also the place where you're going to be able to add on stretch goals, which is the next thing I wanted to talk to you about. Steven asked me a bit ago. I think we're going to, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, well, we're already getting, uh, the campaign runs until the 17th, the 19th, the 19th. The 19th yeah. And, uh, it looks like we're going to make it, which is fantastic. Uh, like Carm said earlier, we're at like 93% or 91%, yep. which is incredible. Um, and I was like, well, you know, we're going to hit it or whatever in like a week or whatever, two weeks Then we're going to have like, like 15 days still. So what else? Do we do if people are still like here here's more money and it's like we have enough to fill the rewards what else are we going to do are we going to like wrap somebody's car in a camara what are we like what's the plan for this i could make that happen um so yeah any and it's a good question right lots of kickstarters struggle with this question of if you hit your goal will anyone continue to support you this is not unique to us and again something that kickstarter does that's not uh native to kickstarter is stretch goals right it's unofficial Kickstarter actually discourages stretch goals. Uh, fun fact for those of you who care, stretch goals and add-ons were both kind of invented in the game space specifically. People who the, the crowdfunding board games on Kickstarter. Is, oh, that's is, like huge. Yeah, it's one of the most innovative uses of the platform. And once you get a little bit closer, you're kind we of should like, make uh, we should make a board game. I actually would love to make a board game. I've got some ideas about that. I'd love to run by the audience at home. Um, also, Danny Romero, the manager from our Lagrange store, is. Uh, following us on uh, Facebook. Hi, Danny. Hey, what's up, Danny? Wish you could be here with us, but uh, Danny, like Stephen, is a little camera shy. Uh, but unlike Stephen, she's not obligated to be here. So. Yeah, <laughs> just my arm. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, so what we're going to do with stretch goals, I've got a lot planned. And we'll typically you don't want to reveal those before you're funding because it does look a little presumptuous. Uh, but we're pretty close, and so you also kind of have to be ready for them. I've worked out a couple really exciting things that I have not told Stephen about, so I'm very excited about so if you do have questions, ask them real time, because again, I think the folks at home are going to wonder. Um, and for those of you who tuned in for the prize, by the way, I, I'm going to wait till we get a few more people on um, in you know, another 10 minutes or so before I announce the, the prize winner. Uh, but if you do want to win an autographed copy of the Magnificent Novelization, uh, just make sure you're a backer before I announce it. And I will pick uh, at random, I will pick a backer to win the prize. So uh, in any case, um, well, Kenneth uh, Prorock just tuned in from... Uh, uh, Facebook. Hi, Ken. Good to, good to talk What's to up, you. Ken? Um, so, um, oh yeah. Danny wants us to make a board game. Oh, got, dude, Danny, bring us your ideas. Yes, we have oh, so many. Um, so stretch goals, I, I digress. Um, so we're going to reveal the stretch goals and the stretch goals in this case are going to be additional items we're going to make that we're going to make available to you. So again, a stretch goal is a perfect thing to add on because it doesn't exist right now. It's not in any of the reward tiers, but let's say you're getting the works. You wanted everything. And then you find out that one of our stretch goals is a zip up hoodie, which is one of our stretch goals. We're going oh, to that's do good. I could use a hoodie. hoodie. Yeah, right. We, we've worn through our X Men hoodies yeah. that we got uh, six years ago when we opened, seven years ago. Um, so we're going to have a zip up pullover hoodie. It's not available yet. You'll be able to, you know, increase your pledge a little bit, and then you'll get the hoodie. But we're not going to unlock the hoodie until we hit a certain goal. And that's because these things have order minimums, right? I can't just order you one hoodie. I have to order at least a dozen or two dozen or whatever it is. And so we've got to hit a certain goal before we can even make that available to you. But once we unlock it, everybody can add it on. Kenneth got Deadpool tickets. That's awesome. Oh, good, Ken. Good on you. I hope it was awesome. I haven't seen it yet. You know, uh, I went to go see Deadpool on Saturday. No, Sunday. I got back from a trip yep. and I went to go see it Sunday and then I went and saw Avengers instead. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've seen it like five times now, but I just can't help myself. I would, I have not seen it a second time, but I, I plan to. Yeah. It, it gets better. Yeah. And my, and it's great. It's only get, it only gets, it only better. gets better. My fiance, God lover um, said, I told her, you know, please let's not talk during the movie. Normally she and I talk during movies and I'm okay with it. But I was like, this is an experience I have to have. I'll answer your questions later. And when the movie was over, she goes, listen, I was good. I didn't talk. 
but we got to go see it again now so I can talk to you during this movie because yeah, I have questions. It's and definitely, there's a lot to unpack. So, Ken, thank, you're very welcome for the Deadpool tickets. I'm glad you can make it to our screening. Uh, I'm sorry uh, I couldn't take more of you, um, but we are going to continue to do screenings in the future. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we rent out uh, theater, uh, an entire theater to ourselves at Hollywood Boulevard Cinema, and we bring 100, 150 of our friends, family, customers, fans, supporters, contest winners. We bring them to see movies for free. And yeah, that's a, uh, those are awesome events. It's really cool because it's cool to go see these movies. It's incredible that they're making these movies, yeah. first of all. What an age we live but, in. But yeah, it's a glorious time. But but it, what's cool about it is um, uh, I've, you see these movies a bunch of times or, you know, whatever. It's one thing to see with like a bunch of strangers you don't know. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's incredible to watch these movies in a room full of dudes and girls that are all into like the same stuff. Yeah. And everyone cheers at the same moments. Everyone's applauding at the same moments. People are freaking out at the same moments. Right, everyone gets the inside jokes. Everyone gets the, the yeah. inside jokes. It's just like uh, it is a totally unique experience. And it's uh, uh, they they're it's not a cheap thing for us to do, but it's like it's probably our favorite thing to do that we do. Going yeah. all the way back to uh, Cal doing it years ago. It's yeah, the planet. Which Cal was, was our like, first boss. Yeah, Spider Man One, Spider Man Two. He did it. Oh, Spider Man Two. Yeah, he did, and that was. I mean, that's where the idea came from. Was like, oh man, we were like kids, and it was the most fun <laughs> it was I think the I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, movie we had ever seen, and it was like I don't know, it was midnight showing, or if it was the showing. It was before. midnight? Yeah, I don't know if I have any midnights. In, oh, Steve Jasinski, you guys. Hey, are, Steve. You guys are awesome for the community, says Steve. Steve, thank you He's very awesome much for the community. Steve is awesome for that. Um, Why is but, Steve the mayor of the brand? I I'd vote for him. Yeah, I would. Uh, but yeah, the 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 showings at the theater, uh, those are awesome. It's yes. like it's my favorite event besides Free Comic Book Day, and the reason I I also want to mention it is because that's the kind of event we're going to do more of. Um with the help of this Kickstarter. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I keep getting sidetracked. Hey, Marco, what's Marco up, Garcia. Dude? Oh man. Let's see you, Marco. Thank you for the screenings. There's so much fun to see with you. Comic shop is an amazing place to support. Thank you, Marco. Marco's a backer and, and we all appreciate it. And so is Steve. Steve is a backer as well. I want to thank both of you for supporting the campaign and for tuning in to watch us. So it means a lot. I see enough of us at and, the store. <laughs> you know, I know screenings are fun, right? But like they're fun because we're all there, right? They're fun because you're there, Marco, because you're there, Steve. Like it's, it's not just – Steven and I have gone to see movies alone. We have a blast. We are our own biggest fans. But uh, it's more fun with you guys. It's just not the same. Um, so uh, I got a little off topic. I do want to move into this like realm of events and things that we're going to do. But I promised you I'd reveal the stretch goal. So we're going to do hoodies. We're working with a company called uh, The Collector's Resource who do uh, frames for comic books that you can display on your wall. And they're going to make a Camaras Comics brand comic book frame. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's going to have a logo at the bottom. It's going to have a blue trim. It's going to be very nice. Uh, so very excited to work with them. Uh, it's a new... Uh, Actually, new service they're offering. They just got the screen printing equipment. Uh, the, the owner's uh, the owner Tony is a great guy. I've known for a long time, and uh, he was very excited to work with us on this. So um, we're going to do that as well. Hey, uh, what's up, Mike? Mike Hilger's on. Hi, Mike. How are you? So, um, uh, Rob O'Neill. Rob is one of the uh, co-hosts of one of my favorite podcasts called Classic Horror Show. So shout out. Oh, to that's awesome. Called Classic Horror Show. They. They talk and they dork out about uh, uh, horror movies and cult, cult films. They go really like in depth and behind the scenes stuff, you know. Oh, awesome. so it's like it's kind of like a learning experience. It's kind of like rewatching my favorite movies. Yeah, and I've like discovered a bunch of new ones. It's like my number one podcast. That is awesome. Actually. Yeah, it's a great show. Thanks for tuning in, Rob. Um, so uh, the last uh, stretch goal I wanted to announce. This is a big one. Is uh, and it's going to require a big threshold because essentially when we're talking about doing something double the scale we originally started with. And we're still working out the pricing, but I want to offer the red series. All right. All of these uh, rewards we're giving away are the yellow on blue, which are three Camaras comics colors have always been red, blue, and yellow, the classic primary colors. Um, and so, um, you know, the blue on the yellow on blue feels right to us, but we could just as well have done red. And so we're going to do a yellow on red series as well. So you'll be able to choose. Do you want a blue t-shirt or a red t-shirt? Maybe you want both. You'll be able to get both using the add-ons. That's awesome. Right? So that's something else we're going to open up as well. Again, we're going to have to hit a pretty high number to make that feasible, right? We're talking about essentially doing double. Like double the Right, what we started with. Uh, but it, it is something we want to be able to offer. Is to that going to be all the items, like a bottle opener? Yeah, I would like to do the red bottle opener. Absolutely. Um, I definitely need the red T-shirt. 
guys, if you have input on rewards you want to see, things like that, uh, Joe Pakovitz is on. David Kostman is hey, on. Hey, what's up, Joe? Uh, good, to he- good to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you have uh, things you want to see, stretch goals, ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, We're going to do that board game. Yeah, the board game is going to be awesome. <laughs> get I, I get Danny on do, the horn. Yeah, get Danny on. You're just going to do some box artwork for us. Um, the Kimmer's Comics board game. Start your own comic book store today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that'd be something. I just really like that idea. Uh, it's been quite a quite an adventure. Um, so, oh, hey, uh, Robert O'Neill wants to make sure we make – yeah, Robert and Steve want to make sure we make T-shirts big enough for everybody. So don't worry. They'll be You'll be able to choose your size if you pledge to our campaign. Uh, we'll have all the sizes available to you. So, uh, and and um, I realize that, uh, you know, once you start talking about like quadruple and quintuple X, which are available, like those end up being substantially more expensive for us. And those are things I couldn't price into. The, I could not charge, you know, $50 for a t-shirt on the off chance some of the backers would need a size like that. So it's order your size. Yeah, exactly. You'll be able to choose your size and, and we're going to eat that to hats. Hats, My know. sister's got like the, her head's the size of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a really small I, head. I think the um, uh, surely you're not. You don't mean Lisa Brown. No, I do. I you mean do. she's she's the smartest of Browns. She's got like a she's gonna get her doctorate. She is. But she her she has a tiny brown. tiny little head like a bird. <laughs> so we uh, we'll have the hats will be adjustable. Where they're gonna have the adjustable. Oh, good. Um, uh, fitted hats ended up being a little too tricky. Um, so that's what we've got in terms of stretch goals for you. Um, I'm gonna check uh, Twitter real fast to, to see if anyone's live tweeting along with us here. Uh, we've had a lot of action on Facebook. Um, very active on Facebook. You know what? Less so on Twitter. So we don't have anybody on Twitter right now, which is fine. Um, so um, now I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to do with the, um, with the store. Uh, this Kickstarter obviously is going to be primarily to create these rewards that we're talking about, but Kickstarters have proceeds, right? We're going to have revenue above and beyond what we needed to uh, just make t-shirts. And so we promised you we're going to put that money back in the store and we mean it, right? We want to have more fun events. We want to have a better selection of products. And we want to talk a little bit about uh, about some of that right now. So um, I'm going to go get uh, the novelization that we're going to give away, the prize. And Stephen, just if you could real briefly talk about some of the things we've done in the store that you like to see more of. I'll be right back. Yeah, I... I think kind of the two biggest areas that we've always kind of talk about wanting to improve and push more and carry more of is the weekly comics. Uh, we're having a hard time keeping those on the shelf because a reboots people uh, buy a plenty and B it's like uh, it, it's impossible to sell three week old merchandise. So just getting the bare bones back on the shelf as far as the, uh, what would be like the monthly comics and then like the essential graphic novels with a lot of the graphic novels we have on the shelf diamond marvel and all these other companies give us um buy-in programs essentially i don't know what sure. you call them but it's basically like we'll give you a pallet of trades and it'll be severely discounted to get you started and it's like that's kind of the stuff we still have left and sure. it's a shame when you know yeah. um Watchmen sold out or Walking Dead Volume 1 is sold out or Saga sold out, the books that we know we can sell every week. And uh, a lot of this money is going to go to just keeping those essentials restocked back in the store so that when people are coming in looking for that stuff, it's not, oh, hey, we'll, we'll get that for you and give us a week to order it and we'll, we'll get that in. It's going to be, no, no, it's right here. We've got three copies deep on it. We've got the, the shelf stock. You know, to yeah, and I think that's the magic word, stock. right, is less wide but deeper on the stuff that we know you want, the stuff you've been asking us for. We have a very wide selection of Camera's Comics. And uh, quick shout out to Jennifer Priester, who uh, just tuned in on Facebook. Hi, Jen. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, so part of what we're doing is we're going to kind of streamline what we're carrying. Um, to that end, we're having a huge Memorial Day customer appreciation sale. Um, we're going we're going to have deals store wide, some up to seventy five percent off. Um, and, and the managers are going to be putting the stuff on sale, but we've instructed them to be pretty liberal with um, with how they get those discounts. So um, you, part of that, what that's going to do is it's going to clear out some of the inventory, some of the selection, and then we're going to redouble our efforts on the stuff that you have told us that you want, right? And that's graphic novels, that's T-shirts. Um, hey, Tom Falker just became a hey, backer. Hey, that's awesome. Thanks very much, Live Tom, updates. for backing. Just in time, because in a few minutes, we're going to give out an autographed copy of our uh, novelization of Magnificent. So if you haven't backed yet and you're watching, please do, because I'm going to pick a lucky backer uh, in just a few minutes. Um, so please. 
story. This is the uh, real has real words, and it. it's not the graphic novel. This is the pro adaption of the graphic novel that Stephen and I made, uh, which we, we could talk a little bit more about in a little bit. You've all heard about uh, the story of Magnificent, but we love telling this, and we'll tell it again. Um, so, other things we're going to do with the store, uh, we're going to bring in a um, like a, a, a paint night in store. I can't call it a, a wine and paint night or, or a, a drink and draw because I can't advertise alcohol at the store. Uh, but we're going to have uh, instructors come in and, and uh, canvases and uh, and we're going to, you're going to be able to paint. It's going to be like a, a, a guided painting night. It makes a great date night. And we're going to offer the store. We're going to try it in July. And I'm going to try it. Yeah, it'll be fun, right? And um, uh, oh, Tom, thanks for the kind words. Tom said we're awesome. Thank you, Tom. No, it was very kind of Tom. Um, but, um, yeah, so I've actually done one before. I painted this, like, picture of the eye hanging in my office. Yeah, there's a, um, a, a bottle and bodega. Yeah, in yeah, a bottle and bodega in the yeah, yeah. We do that all pretty regularly. So this will be a special event for us. And if you guys like it, we'll do it monthly, right? So that's one thing we want to do. Uh, another thing I've wanted to organize for a long time, someone's watching, I hope we can share this with them, is I'd like to talk to Galloping Ghosts. We've talked generally about – doing a cross promotion Gallup and Ghost is an arcade um, in Brookfield. It's the largest arcade in the Midwest, I think. That's right, yeah. yeah. And and so we want to bring in some arcade games and maybe make that part of an all ages like a kids day, a fun day. So that's something we're excited about uh, about doing. Um, we'd uh, we'd like to be able to bring in more and bigger celebrities. Uh, talking to somebody very exciting right now. Some of you local folks probably know uh, Sven Gulli yeah. and uh, we're talking about bringing Sven Gulli to the store, Chicago legend. Um, fun fact for you, my uncle Pepino, my uncle Pepino, his name is also Carmelo, by the way, and we just call him Pepino. He's a very talented artist, and he does wood burnings uh, of celebrities that he likes. And he did uh, this pyrographic uh, image of Svenguli and and sent it to him. And Svenguli had it on the show for the longest time. It was oh, like, in his awesome. gallery of stuff. Yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, a special thanks to uh, Raf Nieves, who's out there, um, who is a, a um, comic book writer and a great guy. And... Um, he uh, helped put us in touch with uh, Sven Gulli's producer. And so uh, thank you, Raf, for the good recommendation. That's another good example of how community works, right? Is you make friends, you do, you put good stuff out there and, and good vibes come back, right? Um, Raf helped us out already. Another shout out to uh, uh, Missy Ellsworth, uh, Melissa, who's out there, who um, did some um, did some gifts for me for the Kickstarter campaign. I did not know Kickstarter supported gifts. Thank you to Tyler James uh, from Comics Tribe for teaching me that in his comics launch course. Um, so GIFs, you know, now I can have that kind of moving screen so I can show you more images in a smaller space and it makes for a more engaging uh, Kickstarter campaign. But Missy helped donate her time to help create those for us. And so this is the kind of thing that, you know what, I didn't even ask. I didn't know what Missy did. Missy volunteered, right? And that's our community is just full of people like that who want to help us out. And that's because I think – a small business, a comic book store adds something to your life beyond just selling you books, right? Um, you can get some of this stuff cheaper online. You can get some stuff a little more conveniently because it comes straight to your door, right? But when you pay a little more at a small business, and I understand you can't all the time. I buy stuff online too sometimes, but when I can buy in a store, I do because you're getting added value, right? You're spending a little more, but you're getting more. When you buy from a local comic shop, you're getting days like free comic book day. You don't see it, right? Because we don't put free comic book day charge on your on your receipt. It doesn't say that anywhere on there. It doesn't say free movie screening six months from now on your receipt. We don't charge for those things, right? But when you support your small business, you're supporting us to go do those things for you. You're supporting the space to have a place for kids to go, to have a place for uh, um, for adults to go to talk about the things they love. One of the nicest things that ever happened since we've been open was I had a mother, uh, you know, and I won't say names because I don't want to, you know, uh, it's private business, but I had a mother come up to us in our first or second year and she said, you know, my daughter is, uh, is on the autism spectrum and she is not comfortable going out of the house alone except to the library and your comic book store. And I was really touched by this. This has meant a lot to me that we created that kind of environment. That's what you help create when you support our Kickstarter, when you buy Magnificent, when you get your books from us and, and get your low, your weekly subscription. That's what you're supporting. Um, so thank you. Uh, Rob, Kevin Costner is great. I, you know I love Kevin Costner, and I hate Rob Zombie. So uh, you and I, we see eye to eye on those. I think that's why we get along so well. How did Kevin um, Costner come up? 
with Rob O'Neill, Kevin Costner is always up. Oh, okay. And I think Rob is always up yeah. for Kevin Costner. So Jeff, he's he's Jeff Goldblum. Exactly. Steven feels that way about Jeff yeah, Goldblum. Okay. I feel that way about Guy Pierce. Yeah, so I'm fair. in the same way. Um, so um, maybe now is a good time to do our giveaway. So I confess, I did not think through how I'm going to do this exactly. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to Kickstarter. Um, I think you're going to break it. If oh, yeah. I'm going to break it if I do it there. Yeah. We're going to go over here on the phone. And we're going to pick a, a – a, you know, Steven's going to help me. Uh, mm. No, no, you'll see. It's going to be fun. I'll just point at the screen. More like, or uh, less what I want you to do. That one. Um, three more backers since we started, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for Oh, that. thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, we're very close to our – God, it would be awesome if we hit our goal on here. If I really wanted I to give would, Steven a run for it, I would have told him that we're going to stay live. Until? until we yeah. <laughs> we just need a few more drinks. That's all. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what, um, I committed us to an hour and we've got some cold ones, so we'll stay on and answer your questions and do nonsense uh, for the next half an hour and who knows, maybe we'll hit our goal. But I promised these nice folks a prize and you've all been very patient, so I'm going to give you a prize. Stephen, we have 49 backers. So all right, I'm going to pick would a like, number. Yes, you're going to pick a number between 1 and 49 and I will tell you. No, that's not fair. It's got to be a different way. Explain. Well, don't the aren't, aren't oh because forty nine is the most order? recent. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, let me think about this. Oh, dude, you just tell him that joke, you know, and I'll be right back. Got it. All right, Steven's gonna go, and I'm gonna tell you guys a joke. What do you get when you cross a rhinoceros with an elephant? Elephino. No, seriously, I might actually have some substance to share with you. So, um, one other big project we have coming out that I'm super excited about. Um, I'm actually hoping. Since Rob's watching, uh, I, I'm hoping to, to see if the Call Classic Horror Show wants to do some kind of cross promotion or something for this. But in the fall, we're going to do our next graphic novel, also going to be on Kickstarter, is going to be a sci-fi horror anthology. An anthology is the format that's it's very near and dear to horror fans everywhere because um, I, there's something about sitting around a campfire telling scary stories that really lands. So um, it's called Cellar Door, which uh, is, you know, one of those legendary expressions in the human language that's very eerie. Uh, Chimera's Comics customer and uh, local artist Guy Casper has done a cover for me that I am super excited about. I will share with Kickstarter backers um, shortly. Um, the anthology, think Twilight Zone. Think stories that creep you out, stories that make you question, right? Because to me, that's what I like about horror. That's what I like about sci-fi is it causes us to look at us, look at ourselves, look at our lives and see things maybe a little bit differently. Um, see things that are maybe we're not comfortable with all the time. Um, and the nice thing about this anthology that I'm super stoked about, because some of you back to Magnificent, you were very patient with us as it took us an extra you know year and a half to deliver it than we expected because it was our first rodeo. I'm very proud to announce that we're increasing our batting average with this one because Cellar Door will be complete before we start our Kickstarter. I've done a 13 page story in collaboration with Danielle Romero, who is uh, on with us now, the manager of our um, Oakland store, or excuse me, our LaGrange store. And um, she's got her own story. She's contributing. Raph Nieves, who I mentioned earlier, is contributing a story. My friend Jimmy Litz, a magnificent backer and um, not, a magnificent backer and a backer of Magnificent, um, and who, who used to do the. Uh, he does this great online comic called The Grimms. He's doing a, a three-page story. The Umbrella People scare the, the poop out of me. Uh, my friend, uh, my friend Troy Namath is is doing a story called Undeath Before Dishonor. I read it. It's based off his award-winning short story. It's terrifying. It's Full Metal Jacket meets um, meets Paranormal Activity. Hey, Ty Andreco, also from Call Classic Horror Show. Thanks for tuning in, Ty. Big fan, by the way. If you missed me earlier, big fan of everything CCH does. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, Danny, I am giving you a shout out. I assume A is Danny. Joe, Danny does awesome art. Yes, she does. Danny does very awesome art. I'm very happy. Um, uh, every time I give Danny, uh, 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 hire Danny for something, she's great. She just did these awesome um, uh, portrait shots uh, for my brother. My brother has his first novel coming out because what have I done with my life, right? It takes me 28 years to make my first book. Nicholas is 16 and he's putting out his first book this year. Uh, with a new uh, new publishing company called Gen Y, very exciting. And Danny did some uh, artwork of his superheroes, um, the Crusader, Indominus, and uh, the Chimera, because he shares my narcissism a little bit. And these characters are going to be in uh, um, 
these characters are going to be in his book, The Crusader, uh, which will also come out later this year. Uh, so anyway, Cellar Door, uh, you know, the creators who are participating, we've invited 15, 20 creators. Oh, lest I forget, Ryan Flaherty and Matt Hastings, uh, two scholars and gentlemen. Ryan, uh, one of the editors on Magnificent and my one of my oldest friends, and uh, Matt Hastings, who I met through Ryan, great guy, fellow philosopher. Uh, they've got two stories they're going to put in there as well, and they really kind of spearheaded this um, initiative. So I'm um, very excited. And, you know, them and, and several other creators we've invited in. Uh, we, we invited Craig Bass and, and, and Lydia Coranda. Lydia was the colorist on Magnificent. And Craig is a friend of ours who helped helps do our Kickstarter video for Magnificent and uh, and works uh, with Steven at Motion Source. Um, they're going to do a, they've said they were interested in doing a story. Um, so hopefully, you know, all these creators you know, are excited about this as I am and, and that we all get these things um, done. And um, there's plenty more creators as well. But the story was this, like, we're going to do this in October. If you get your story done by the end of September, you're in. And if you don't, no hard feelings, but we're going to move on because because we are, uh, we want to get it out on time. So, um, yes, yes, Ty, I am a candy bar and I am just as delicious or so I'm told. Steven, why don't you tell us what we've, what do we have here? Did you write 50 yeah. numbers on the post-it notes? I did. And we had exactly 52 uh, little of these post-it note guys. Ah, very good, uh, very so good. Dan Vito would be very happy. So uh, since I did all the grunt work here, we'll have you pick out the... I got to pick it out? Oh, Y'all have to bear with me as I try to figure out who is what backer number, because that yeah. was something I thought I'd have oh. available to we me. We didn't really think this through. No, no, it's no. fine. It's fine. No, we'll we're figure doing it out. fine. We'll figure, yeah, we're going to be fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, it's going to stick that little dog in the fire. I'm <laughs> <laughs> talking about, right? Yeah, it was very, he ran a very popular Kickstarter, and they the made like a plush of the dog. So. All right, everybody, this is who wins Magnificent. By the way, if there's two stuck together, you know, just don't look at it, and I'll separate Gosh. them. Gotcha. Is it one? Uh, it's just well, feel it. Yeah, that's one. There you go. All right, and the winner is number twelve. Number twelve. I, that's the exact number let's, I was gonna pick. Let's. Oh man, someone just became back or fifty. There were there were fifty two in here. So, so you accounted yeah, for. Yeah, accounted okay. for extra. Good, good. Yeah. Let's see if I can. Well, figure I, out. I just used all the post-its we had. Oh, Sarah's sure. gonna be salty tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, Let's see if I can figure out who backer number 12 is. 15, 14, 13. All right. Backer number 12 is Jason Peters. Jason Peters. Jason, congratulations. You won an autographed copy of, of Magnificent, the novelization. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we'll be messaging you separately um, to get your shipping information early so we can send it to you or we can send it with your rewards uh, come June, you know, whichever you prefer, I'll message you to figure it out. So Jason, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, um, I'm glad that you won. I hope you like it. So, um, well, uh, we still have uh, about 20 minutes and believe it or not, people are watching. We have, we still have, uh, um, how, how do you know that? It, well, there's a little oh, yeah. eyeball with numbers. So this was, you gotta let this load now. Cause I, I moved away from the screen. No. Oh. Okay. So we've got seven people live on, um, Seven people live on Facebook right now, and we've got uh, three people on. And that's the uh, store computer in Lagrange, and that's the store computer <laughs> in Oak Lawn, and well, that's well, on the my. The stores cell phone. are both closed. You, you goon. No, no, um, it's, we. I put. I set it up before I left. Oh, that was smart. <laughs> yeah, make it look that's like bad. we're popular. Yeah, hey, we are popular. Mm. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let me see if I can get this live post back here, so I can talk to our friends again. Um, Steven, is there anything you want us to do as a store event wise or anything like that? that you're excited um, about doing? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it's like, there's, I, I feel like there's a plethora of events that go on in LaGrange between um, like the pep parades coming up in June, I think. Uh, yes. Yes. Right? Pep parades in June. Yep. Uh, they do a sidewalk sale uh, every Thursday. They do those uh, fresh markets in the parking lot out there. Quick shout out to Rob O'Neill, who just became a backer. Hey, Thank you, thanks, Rob. Rob. We appreciate it. Thanks for the shout out as well. And uh, to uh, Tom, he wants us to have a duel. So uh, do you want like the Tom, let us know. Do you want us to duel? We can't, uh, Hold on. Steve just in. He says there can only be one. Who is your favorite Highlander character? I Steve's going to kill me, but uh, I've never seen Highlander. You've never seen Highlander? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, yeah. that's terrible. I understand the concept, and uh, I think um, I saw Jet Li the one. Oh, like, yeah, sure. Movie, and then yeah. I was like, oh, cool concept for a movie. And yeah. then everyone's like, it's Highlander. And I'm like, yeah. I Quick shout out to poor Jeff Lee, who Stephen in very poor taste brought up, despite his crippling illness that was made public today. So oh, I classy, Stephen. I didn't know anything about it. Um. 
let's see here. Uh, sorry, Steve. We'll have to have a Highlander marathon at the store at some point. How many, Steve? How many Highlander movies have they made? Oh, we have enough. We have someone commenting on Kickstarter now, and it's um, Christine Horst who's sending me very dirty messages. She says, "Carmelo, pause chat." That's hot not. That's a button. That's just pause. No, it says not what she, she said. said. No, it's what she said. Christine is my fiance. Hi, You're honey. Getting married? I'm getting married. She I never am mentions fiance. it. A running joke all the time that I never talk about it. So um, I talk about it. Hey, Doug. Time. Doug Genius is watching. Doug, Doug's watching. Hi, Doug. What's up, Doug? We miss Doug. Doug worked for us at the store for a long time. We just haven't seen Small him. Small guy. There. Yeah. I think I'm gonna help Doug move. Tom, about Highlander. It's not for. Rob says it's the greatest movie of all time. Wow, that's high praise. Rob, you review movies on a podcast. That is high praise. Yeah. I won the. You won the Oscar. Rob says he won the Oscar. Oh. No, no, it won the Oscar. Oh, it did. It won the Oscar yeah. for um for Doug, what? For, look, it's not for lack of wanting that we haven't seen. It's ignorance. Everything I, I do comes from ignorance. It's just that there's so many fandoms out there. I'm still working my way through Star Trek, right? I'm you know, like, I was talking about trilogies. You know, they have yeah. like a lot of trilogies. Is Highlander a trilogy? Is Highlander a trilogy, Robert? Robert, let us know. Or Steve or or Tom, you all seem to be Highlander fans. Let's yeah, know. I didn't know Highlander was such a big deal. That's awesome. Um, Doug, <laughs> Doug's throwing shade. Doug says he wants more movie marathons at the store, but better movies than Highlander. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Rob just proposed to me. Rob says that if it doesn't work out with Christine, Rob O'Neill. Um, but uh, Rob, as I recall, has a, has a very lovely wife who is very patient with his love of horror movies. So I think I'd have a hard time edging her out. But uh, thank you, Rob. I'm very flattered. Uh, so uh, Doug wants us to to put the Phantom on at the store. That that's a solid movie. I like that's, the Phantom. I love that movie. It's good. And he says more Jeff Goldblum. You so can never we, go wrong with more. Goldblum. We'll just do Thor Ragnarok as a, as a, <laughs> Oh, good deal. Tom says there's four Highlander movies. Wow. A couple series, but just watch the first one. You're better off. All right. Fair enough. Most movies, I feel like the more they make, the worse they get. And, you know, yeah, it, I mean, that's sure. a rule to be broken. But, right. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, we'll give Highlander a shot. Maybe yeah. we'll do a uh, – we used to do a lot of those, and then our projector broke. Uh, yeah. We used to do um, screenings in the store. We did the Smallville finale, and then I think we did – a video game tournament for Marvel vs. Capcom yeah. 3 when it came out. Yeah, that was fun. A lightsaber fight broke out in the streets of LaGrange. That's that was true. Two Spider-Man yeah, showed was there up. For that. And, yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, Lydia's that's, watching. that's actually Hi, what Lydia. we should do. Hey, what's up, Lydia? That's uh, I heard they had an awesome time at uh, ASIN this past weekend. Yeah, I heard ASIN was a lot of fun. It's one convention I've never been to. I was supposed to go, and then I had vacation instead. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you were hardly slumming in at the Animal Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. I saw a rhinoceros. That is really cool. Yeah, I just they're... told that joke I know about the rhinoceros. Oh, did that you? That was the I joke. I I was busy writing all those posts. Yeah, you told me to tell the joke. That's oh, good. one good. joke. So, um, anywho, um, I totally lost my train of thought. We were talking about Highlander movie screenings at the store. We we're talking about doing some screenings. So I would love to do more screenings. I think that's a lot of fun. I think people do show up for those. We started doing um, some recently Danny arranged where we were bringing in a podcast that was like, that would be ridicule these terrible movies. Um, and, oh, and it's like a, yeah. Brain farting on the name, but they do these like rip off movies. Like, like people do like suicide squad rip offs and stuff. So here's a fun fact for you. I think our friends from the Call Classic Horror Show will appreciate. When I was in high school, my friends and I created a spreadsheet called the Camelgram. Carmelo, Arundel, and McElvain, that was the uh, Chimera, Arundel, and McElvain was the Camelgram. And the Camelgram measured not the quality, but the enjoyability of a movie. And we watched the worst movies you could possibly imagine. We calibrated the scale by watching a few good ones that should score high, and they did. Okay. And then we watched movies that, like... Is this that fight thing you did? You were like, We well, also did a fight scene marathon. Man, you had no, a lot of time on your hands in that school. Well, well, you know, that's what you get when you go to an all-boys high school yeah. and you don't have a girlfriend. It's so, weird when they don't let girls in the school with boys. Christine says, Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is... Uh, Danny watches idea. that a lot in the shop. Yeah, I've never uh, particularly watched that show, but it's the same idea, right? You watch a terrible movie, right? They watch a terrible yeah. movie and ridicule it. Yeah. Um, if you guys would watch Stephen Mocking Mockbusters, thank you, Danny. The podcast was called Mocking Mockbusters, and these are the guys. They they come to the store. I think we're doing this regularly now, and they'll screen this 
this garbage movie and they'll tear it to pieces, which is like That's one of my favorite pastimes. And uh, so if you guys would watch Steven and I watching a movie and ripping it apart, let us know. Rob says The Shadow. I would do. No, that's it's a, a good, good movie. movie. That's the a Shadow good movie. knows. Yeah, right? yeah, that's excellent. Uh, we would do The Shadow Phantom like back to back, I think would be fun. Yeah, those are, uh, they're in like the same universe. Tell you what, this Kickstarter funds, we will we will go back to back. Uh, Steven and I will host a Phantom Shadow. What do you say? We'll get some I'm beer. Down for that. Even yeah. if it's just the two those of us. Are, those are excellent store. movies. Yeah, those are great. So, um, hold on. Steve, Christine says, what's the worst movie you both have seen? Um, do you mean the, the worst oh, movie? Oh, what was that movie? Um, we saw it in theaters and like a little, uh, like a robot kicks a girl like across. Oh my God. And you laugh. Sucker punch. Yeah, that's a terrible movie. I hate Zack Snyder the way Rob O'Neill hates Was Rob that Zombie. Zack Snyder? It was. It was. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. always been awful. That movie was a self-indulgent mess. And the reason Sucker Punch sucked so bad was because it was trying to be super dramatic, right? It was trying to be this really heartfelt moment where this girl gets like you mean hit like by a League? giant steam. Yeah, like or you that. mean like Superman? Oh, I like that. Or you mean like Batman vs. Superman? A little bit like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I, my favorite, Stuart Karubis, our mentor pointed this out, was that um, they call him the visionary director. Uh, Zack Snyder, the visionary director of 300, it was someone else's vision. He's the visionary director of Watchmen. It was oh, someone yeah. else's vision. He literally uh, just adapted them like yeah. shot for shot. And they're great adaptions, and I actually yeah. will give him credit yeah. for those. Are they, though? I have a lot of fun with with 300. Everyone loves 300. Uh, 300's good. I'll Christine give you that. Christine loves 300. But I think 300, that's like an easy one when you just shoot it panel for panel. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? Is you know? It was a good adaption, but it doesn't make him a visionary. No, he's definitely not a visionary. He's, yeah. he's like... um. He's like that kid you went to school with in fourth grade that grows up and still thinks like a fourth grader. You know what I mean? It's like, he's just like, it would be awesome if right. Superman murdered a guy yeah, he from doesn't... orbit with his laser eyes. And you're like, dude, that's, you're now writing fan fiction. That is not Superman. <laughs> hey, Eddie Castillo uh, joined in. Hi, Eddie. We used to work with Eddie at uh, 10th Planet. Good to see you. Um, Danny says here, she has a lot of movies we could riff on, including piece of 90s captain america um is a masterpiece <laughs> danny is fired the, the italian red uh, skull yeah pasta visually i gotta get to the captain america, captain america. i actually like that movie um it was it's uh, terrible it's just it's some good stuff in it. that's jd salinger's kid yes matt captain salinger jd yeah. salinger author of catcher in the rye um, quick line to uh, uh, Rob O'Neill who wants to come to Chicago just to watch The Untouchables. We will gladly join you in that. But if you hang out with me for a weekend, you might get to live The Untouchables. That nope. is a mafia joke. Uh, not just kidding. There's no such thing as the mafia. Uh, Rob O'Neill says, I hate Snyder too. It just has to come up in the podcast. Yeah, yeah wait for it. <laughs> um, Doug says he is a visionary yeah. of how not to make DC movies. Oh, all right. There you there go. There was an yeah. ellipsis in there. Yeah, all right. Movie. Sarcasm. Um, Worst up oh, 70s Doctor Strange Tom Fokker says you must I've, watch it. I've never seen that and I'm sure it's horrific. I have it. Uh I'm I always anxious. thought they should have made they, they missed their boat with Doctor Strange. And yeah. I think I've talked about this on the Caffeinated Comics podcast with John Clark. Mm -hmm. Is um Vincent Price should have been Doctor Strange. Oh my god, yeah. Vincent Price was like, Doctor Strange. I don't Strange. know why, like forever ago when that dude was still around making movies, that wasn't like number one on their list with a bullet. It was like <laughs> put this dude in a Doctor Strange oh, movie. Like, some roles people are just born to play. He yeah. He yeah. really would have been. Doug says there needs to be more Green Lantern. Danny says uh, it's amazing and I love it, but honey, please. So I think she's talking about Captain America. But the Red Skull does those cool spin kicks and stuff. Yeah. And you remain a poor choice, my American brother. Uh, I guess I get, yeah. Doug says Green Arrow over Hawkeye. Yeah. Shots fired! Man, Doug's just, he's looking for, for a fight. He he's can't looking win. looking for a fight. He can't win. Um, uh, tell you what, so um, we'll stay on for, we've got nine more minutes for a full hour. I will give away one more copy of Magnificent in nine right. more minutes. Well, how many, so. Maybe I'll make more of these things with 55 backers. Oh, yeah, let's see. I don't see. know how many we have. I'm if we have sure 52, we'll just pull where out. Where are we at thing. right now is the question. Let's see here. We're at 50 backers. Um, we're at 50 backers right now. So, um, yes, we'll, we're going to make – we're going to draw a number 1 to 55. So if you haven't backed yet, 
and you're one of the next five, you can still get into the drawing. We'll give away one more copy of Magnificent. All right, I'm going to go make three more of these things. Yeah, everyone seems to be having a good time, so I'm digging this. Rob O'Neill says he's still waiting for Cage to put on the Superman suit. Uh, hey, guy, Kate. yeah, Guy Casper just tuned in. Hi, hey, Guy. Casper. Doug says, name the time and the place, Archer's at dawn. So Doug is picking a fight with a bow and arrow, too. Um, you know, Doug is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And for some reason in the friend group, people are always like, we're always picking on Doug. And I think it's because like, he's so nice, but the truth is he's a, he's a soldier. He is a trained United States soldier. He is the only person in the room who actually has been trained to hurt people. And yet everybody teases him like he couldn't kick all their asses. So quick shout out to Doug. You're a hero. All right. So in a few more minutes, we're going to pick. One more copy of Magnificent we're going to give away. I have the numbers 1 through 55 here 55. in this box. So if you're one of the five, five next backers, and you can still make And if we pull it. number 55 and we don't have that many backers, you just pick another one. We'll just pick another one, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just keep going. So um, so uh, Steve Jasinski says the best Hawkeye was the dude in MASH. It's Alan Aldo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, Eddie gave us a thumbs up. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing this, actually. This is um, kind of what we're always talking about, about like making community, you know? And um, so I'm very excited about this. You, you want to draw one now or you no, want to? Yeah, no, let's wait a few more minutes. Wait. Wait. I'm just separating. <laughs> um, so I never answered Christine's question, which is what's the worst movie I've ever seen? So for my cinephiles Sucker out there. Sucker Punch, I thought. Sucker Punch was bad, but it had that actress who plays Hellcat, who I really like. But <laughs> have you ever heard of Leonard Part 6? Because now that Bill Cosby's in jail, I think it's even more fun to ridicule his second lowest moment. It was his lowest until his conviction uh, because he's a rapist piece of garbage. But uh, hold on, Tom Faulkner says, now I want to see Alan Alda as Marvel's Hawkeye. Old man Hawkeye. That'd be cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Step one, Alan Alda Hawkeye. Step two, profit. Yeah. Um, so if you have not seen... Um, Hold on. Steve says, Steve just says he says he's busting stones, which I think is a way of saying he's, he's busting balls. But I can't say balls. For the kids. This is a friendly, kid-friendly kid friendly friendly thing. Broadcast. Thanks for keeping it clean, everybody. Um, so, um, Leonard Part 6, have you ever heard of it? Did I ever make you watch no. it? It's the story of a spy named Leonard, uh, Leonard Parker, I think is listening. Anyways, in the movie, Bill Cosby fights giant chickens, rides an ostrich, fights lobsters, at one point, frogs lift up a car and throw it into the lake. It is, uh, it's one of the worst is, movies. Is, uh, uh, is this guy in a frog suit? This no, no, is, frogs. Like little, real frogs. Frogs with like 80 CGI, a bunch of frogs get under a car and lift it. Not quite a horror movie, but I would love to hear CCH's take on this. I, you know, Steven and I could riff on it if you guys wanted to get together. Um, Rob says the worst movie he's ever seen is Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. <laughs> Pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I knew enough. I know enough about Rob Zombie to know I don't need to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a mess. Yeah, uh, I've never even heard of that uh, Bill Cosby movie. Oh, it's and, terrible. Uh, it's ter it's yeah. not available, really. It oh, shouldn't be. My fiance became backer number 51. Oh, oh that's thanks, cool. There's, there's at least 51 numbers in there. That's right. There's 51 numbers. So we have four more backers. You haven't given her a signed copy of that book yet? She has signed copies of it anytime she wants, but she's apparently now going to get some some cool commercials entered into the as well. Yeah, no, she she has a signed copy because she backed Magnificent before we were a couple actually, and she she got a copy through that. She also got the a old fine. Way. Yeah, yeah, she got a fine commission from you, which is some more cool things coming up in our Kickstarter. Uh, Christine says, "I do not need a book." So if we draw the number fifty one, right, we'll throw we're going to throw another one. Um, Tom thinks this is hilarious. Anywho. Um, if uh, uh, I digress, a couple more things for the Kickstarter. One of the things we did last time that we're going to bring back is Stephen will do commissions for you. So we're going to introduce a slightly higher reward tier later if you want Stephen to do a custom drawing of whatever you like. And we'll be able to share some of his artwork with you on the Kickstarter campaign uh, as well. And Danny uh, Romero will likely end up helping us pinch it because Danny always is very helpful when we do commissions. We don't deserve for We do not deserve it. No, we don't. Uh, no, the only problem with Danny Romero is that there's not one two of them. Yeah, yeah we need, we need more than one. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, but Steven's not the only artist. I have a little bit of an art project of my own. I run with my brother, Nicholas Camaras Customs, where we make custom toys. So I will make you a custom pop figure of yourself. I can do your likeness in that adorable style with the big eyes and the 
you know, the, the little square heads yeah. you know, talking about. So I'll share some pictures of that I've done myself. Christine and I are doing our wedding cake toppers. That's um, actually a really cool idea. Cool? Yeah. yeah. I've got a cool a little picture of Carmelo in a tuxedo. Uh, Christine won't show me hers because Christine uh, wants to keep her wedding dress a complete surprise. So she's working on it. Uh, it turns out she's quite the artist too, but only with unusual media. So like okay. she's a great pumpkin <laughs> so nothing, carver. She right. makes great sandcastles. Like – that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it turns out she's good at customizing figures. Rob O'Neill says it's happening. I'm searching for it now. Leonard part six. If you don't find it, Rob, let me know. And I will mail you my personal copy. That is amazing. Guy says, what's going on? I'm so lost. Dude, guy, I'm lost too, man. It's just like, I'm. <laughs> for those I'm of you me. just tuning in, or for those of you who are guy Casper, we are doing a live broadcast to talk about our Kickstarter and some of the ideas for Camaro. I Comics. promise we were talking about that for some of the time for some of it. And then we just started having fun, which is really the point of all this. So, um, any, any, hold on. Eddie Castillo says Lego brick heads are the next big thing. Plus easy to make customs. Eddie, if you uh, end up getting a custom of yourself and you want a brick head instead of a pop figure, that would be awesome. Um, Rob says he needs that pop figure. Send him a link, Rob. We're going to reveal that, uh, as a reward that we reveal later in the campaign. Um, Conventional Kickstarter wisdom for anyone who cares is not to reveal all your rewards up front because it can be a little overwhelming to people. And when you've got something very, you know, too many choices, they call it a feature fatigue. But when you you have a really cool reward like that, you reveal it later. Uh, it gives it, a, it gives it a moment to shine, right? It'll have its own email blast, its own update, its own day on social media to kind of breathe a bit. Um, but yes, I will happily do. I would be honored to do the Rob O'Neill pop figure. I think would be. Awesome. I'll even it's, do a, a zombie variant. It's yeah. incredible how many or how much like a likeness you can get without having a nose. Yeah. And yeah. you know what it's I think weird. it is? It's in the eyebrows. What? Yeah, it's in no, the that, eyebrows. That's weird. Yeah, no, trust no, I don't me. think so. I, yeah, trust me. I know, not that you haven't been to art college and studied this sort sure. of thing. Yeah. But it's been, Brandon Scripp joined in. Brandon used to come to Hey, the Brandon. Yeah. The guy yeah. moved down south. Rob also wants a commission drawing of him standing victoriously over Rob's army. Hey, happily. <laughs> I would cherish it, he says. I would love to see this. Uh, Jacqueline just tuned in. Jacqueline, thanks for tuning in. Welcome. Used to, used to hang out at the store playing Magic. Magic Hero Click stuff we want to bring back, um, you know, with this Kickstarter is going to help us bring some of those things back. So wonderful, wonderful news. And for those of you just tuning in, there's there's uh, uh, still uh, – right now we've got 13-plus people. If you haven't become a backer yet, please do because I'm going to give away one more autographed copy of Magnificent in just a few more minutes. And we have the numbers 1 through 55 written on uh, posted. I, I'll add more. We have no shortage of uh, yeah. post-its. Yes. No, we have, pl we have plenty of post-its. I'm actually curious now. This is, this is sort of like a uh, – it's become a PBS drive. We're at 51 backers. We're oh, man, we're like, uh, uh, who used to do the phones? Yeah, you know yeah, mean? the PBS yeah. phone drive, yeah. Except for, like, a really good cause, you know what right, I mean? Right, yeah, yeah, like, uh, it's not for, like, teaching hey, kids to read and stuff Hey, get for like the yeah. comic book store you <laughs> like a lot. Um, so we actually, we're 100 and, I don't math too good, we're $118 away from our goal, actually. That's a lot closer than when we started this broadcast That's uh, an wild. hour ago. Um, but, and, and everyone seems to be having fun, but I'm not sure if we're going to like wear people out or not. I think I'd sooner wrap it up and do this again. Actually, if you guys would enjoy it, we'll do this again. And, uh, uh, we could tell you some stories. We could tell you about how we started the store, how we came up with Magnificent, um, uh, what's coming up in the next Magnificent. Uh, I would love to, uh, spend a little more time with you guys. You know, what's a really bad movie. What's that? And I'm going to die on this hill. Oh, let's have uh, it. You wanted a duel. Mad Max Fury Road is a garbage movie. Yes, I hate that movie. It's a dumb movie. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm so glad you said and, that. I hated uh, that movie. Yeah, it's stupid. So <laughs> that's yeah. – uh, I know a lot of people like that movie, but they're wrong. Yeah, it's, you know you wanted to fight, but you don't have one for No, me. it's a, it's a terrible movie. Yes. Tom says it's dumb, but it's pretty. It is pretty. It's a – yeah, yeah, it's a, agreed. It's it a is a very visually movie. awesome movie, but that is probably the dumbest movie I've seen in five years. I couldn't I couldn't follow it. I couldn't – No, I could follow it. You just got to follow the U-turn they take and the, the whole <laughs> point of the movie. It's just like uh, – it's stupid. It's a dumb movie. Yeah, and you know, frankly – they might have been better if they just lost Mad Max, right? Like if it was just Charlize Theron's character and they didn't have this whole other subplot I'm supposed to know about, like I might have enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah, it's hard to say. Definitely more Charlize Theron would have made me like that movie more, but um, I don't know. 
I, I was like blown away how blown away everyone was. Danny by that says movie. friendship over. Nah. But I would like to remind Danny we fired her for hating on the Captain America movie a little bit ago. Nah, she's great. <laughs> All right, I think it's time for our I think it's time for our drawing. We said we were oh, doing yeah, it Let's do it tonight. All right, time to find out who wins a book. All right. That's like a hundred. They're all stuck together here. Yeah, Stephen, all the pages. Wait, one more. There you go. And the winner by knockout, number 21. Congratulations, 21. I have to figure out who you are now. Hang on we're a second. We're going to look it up. Give us a second. Here. Yeah, give us a moment. We're going to actually we're gonna switch oh, right We're going to do here. it over here. We're still live, uh, but we're, we're all, we're going to look at the dashboard here. And we're going to look at this. Uh, uh, you know how to do this, huh? I, I'm very good at this. Ish, sort of. Um, let's do this. Let's go to the backer report. What? Well, that one right there, Pudges. It doesn't, oh, shit. That would have done it. Oh, Wait, no. They're, 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 they're numbered. 21. Erica Valez. Erica, congratulations. You've just won an autographed copy of Magnificent that we're going to send to you. So, Erica, thank you very much for being a backer. We do really appreciate it. Uh, Rob O'Neill says that uh, Tom Hardy is a hack just like Kubrick. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are gonna we're gonna start wrapping it up, but I had a lot of fun with this, and I think even if you and I just talk about like bad movies for a while, I think people would watch. So um, I really enjoyed this, guys. I really enjoyed all the feedback. This was way more fun than either of us expected, um, and way more of a success. So many. I thought just my mom was gonna watch. Yeah, I thought just Christine was gonna watch because she would prefer me be at home with her. But she and she is watching, but so is so are so many other people. Uh, so we ended up doing uh, very well. We came very close to our goal tonight, just in the hour we've been sitting here. So thank you all very much. I'm very excited to to uh, take this campaign with you. We're gonna reveal more rewards. We're gonna reveal stretch goals. We're gonna reveal bonuses. I've got lots of free prizes that are gonna come your way. Free comics and stuff. Lots of cool goodies. I have a surprise literally for every day of this campaign. And that's when I think uh, Stephen doesn't quite even know the whole plan, the whole scope. Because I want to be surprised. I love surprises. Yeah, he loves surprises. He says that all the time. Um, uh, uh, Danny threw in congrats to Erica. Yep. Uh, so uh, any uh, anything you want to say? Hold on. Christine wants to know, how much did you raise while you were on? Uh, that's a good question, Chris. Um, we went on at 8 p.m., and I think, let's see, I can't see the exact times I can track. Today is the 21st. Today's the 21st. Let's go to the dashboard. How much did we raise? Well, I can tell you this. We went from 87% funded to 95% funded. So that was a full um, yeah, wow. 7% jump. What is this little graph here? This is the thing The graph's shows. the progress. Yeah. So this is, you notice nice and steady. Um, so yeah, so we went from... Hold on. We went from 2,046. We were just over that today. I think we're at about 2,100, and and now we're we're at 2,282. So, um, well well over um seven percent more, uh, which is just under two hundred dollars um raised over the last hour. So that's awesome. That's so, humbling. Yes. Thank you all very very much. Looks oh Tom Tom was keeping track for us. Yes, a buck fifty, he says. So about a hundred, about 150. So thank you all very much for for tuning in. I hope you had fun. Um Chris Dixon just tuned in. Oh, dude, man, Chris Dixon, dude, what is Chris, up? Yeah. Chris Dixon. Uh I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not. Chris Dixon's a swell dude. He really is. He is. But uh I follow Chris Dixon on Instagram. Head to you. Uh, I'm not on Instagram, yeah. Chris Dixon, I think, is <laughs> I might be wrong about this. He's a swell guy if you could find him on Instagram. He's I, watching I'll him look right him up. Now. He he's managing like pro wrestling uh What? Yeah, like local That is awesome. Yeah, he's like a manager. And if you guys know Chris Dixon, he is he is like the per that is the perfect gig for this dude. He is amazing. He's a magical man. That is that's you, incredible. You hear that, Chris? You're a, you're a magical man, Chris. Yeah, um, I'm gonna no, nah, I'm gonna keep Troy Swanson's tuning hey, in. Hey Troy, what's up? Oh man, I'm so tempted to, to go for that last like hundred hours and stay on here. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean if they're bored of us, they can tune out, right? That I mean, is, that is true. In. Yeah, it could just be the two of us sitting here. Gosh, hundred and eighteen dollars is really like I think if we did 150 in the last hour, we could do another hundred. All right, so uh Chris Dixon is on Instagram. Uh -huh. And I, Chris, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you can follow Chris <laughs> at Chris D I X 1910. I don't know what that means, but this dude is legitimately 
uh, like a manager <laughs> for pro wrestlers. <laughs> that is awesome. And I don't know like how you can find him or where you see it. I only know of it because of Instagram. Yeah. And hopefully he's a bad guy. You know oh, I mean? yeah. I mean, ideally. <laughs> he'd be yeah. great as a bad guy. Ideally. Christine says, you have my permission to just stay if you think it will work. Yes. Yeah, so maybe you weren't supposed to read that out loud. Oh, maybe she should have prefaced it. She should like, have hey, don't read, but you read it before you, yeah. you know, realize what it says. I think the chat is visible too, though. I think everyone. Oh, everyone see can it. see that. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know the folks on Facebook can't see all the um, the dirty limericks and the the dirty emojis that Christine is sending me. It's but, disgusting. Um, it's, hold on, Christine says screen those calls and no, it's not. Oh, so I guess you guys can't see everything she's been sending me. Um, which is maybe um, for the best, uh, considering that it got pretty graphic there. I'm I'm hours. scarred for life. Yeah, that's really, I'm, yeah. I'll never recover. Yeah. And for those for those of you who just tuned in and don't know this, uh, Christine's my fiance. Yeah. Dude, congratulations! Thank I had no you. idea you were engaged. Yeah, no, I, I'm awesome. engaged. Yes. What do you call that when you're uh, engaged? I am affianced. You're affianced. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes. I didn't um, know that about you. Yeah, uh, Tom Faulkner says there's less lag over on Kickstarter, so. Um, well, yeah, and I think Facebook's like a uh, 15 second delay or something. So you yeah. guys are living in the past, you know? <laughs> or are get, we living in the get future? With the program. Ooh, yeah. I didn't consider that. I'm gonna. Do you want another one, more tea, Vicker? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Give us just another one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for anyone that's uh, kind of just joining us, we were kind of trying to stay on topic for the most part, and this totally derailed um, as far as what the message was supposed to be. But uh, this was kind of supposed to be a general, like, thanks so much for all your support and for everyone in the community that's kind of come together to make the store what it is. That is not something uh, we did on our own. That is, that is something uh, everyone who's come to the store has helped make it uh, be the place that it became. Uh, if this, 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 in those first couple weeks was literally just uh, us sitting around uh, with comic books and empty shelves and, uh, uh, you know, a, a beer tab at Palmer's, yeah. you know. So <laughs> it's really cool that other people were kind of on board with kind of taking it and kind of running with it. Uh, it. It means a lot. And it's really interesting to kind of see at least that, like, we weren't so off mark that, uh, other people wanted to kind of go along with this lunacy. Yeah, I think that's um, that's it's kind of gratifying when your dream resonates with people. Um, so that's always very encouraging. Um, and you know, one thing we did want to do with this live broadcast was hear like, what do you think you'd like to see at your dream comic book store, or what kind of events would you have fun doing with us? And and we put a lot of planning into those things. I recently had the idea to do a, the midnight opening for Free Comic Book Day, and like it could have just been me sitting alone in the dark you know, eating chocolate chips with Nicholas. My brother was nice enough to come with me to, so that I wouldn't be alone. Turns out I needed his help to run the store because it turned into a zoo. Yeah, thank God Dave was there too. Thank God. Yeah, Dave said he had a feeling. Dave Kazada, who works in the Oakland store, thanks for believing in me. And he showed up just because he, he had a feeling. And, he, and and lo and behold, it was it was as busy as if it were mid-afternoon. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i routinely proven wrong on matters <laughs> of uh, – the willingness of like the community to kind of get behind us. I'm like, yeah, no one, yeah. no one cares what we're doing over here. And then we do a midnight release and people show and up people and you're, up. you really are kind of surprised. Cause uh, I don't want to be there at midnight, <laughs> but it's, it's awesome that people do. Um, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like I yeah. said, it's, it's really kind of humbling to, to kind of see people. Quick uh, note, uh, Brianna who just tuned in, Brianna just started working for us. Yeah. Brianna's and, awesome. And she says, wow, is that the beer Carm owes me? Yes, Brianna, this is your beer. Yeah, it is delicious. He's drinking it right now, right in mm. front of you, live on, on Facebook. <laughs> guy says he loves us. We love you too, Guy. You're one in a million, Guy Casper. Um, so uh, um, the point I was making about the midnight thing, and this, and it kind of ties into this live Kickstarter, is sometimes we just do things, and we see how it works out. And this is something that I wanted to try because it sounded cool. And now here it is. We've been, like, hanging out with a dozen people you know, in a rotating lineup. So, so probably closer to two dozen people all said and done over the last hour. I didn't even know this was that everyone was going to engage with us like this. I didn't know people would be talking to us in the chat. I would have got like a haircut. If you know, I, <laughs> if I knew we were going to get this people, we're actually going to tune am, in. I am well behind on a haircut. Yeah. I've got to go see my stylist. That's yeah, uh, crazy. Yep. Yep. It's cool. So, um, Brianna says, uh, LMAO. She doesn't know that I'm serious and I am, 
I am cr- I'm no, not, we'll, I'm not doing this in a nice spirit. I'm no, doing we'll, it in a cool way. Yeah, we'll get her a proper so beer. We'll get you a yeah, proper we, we a drink. Mexican beer. We did a um, that is not a it's not a racial thing. He was saying I love about, Mexican beer. They Mexican do it better beer. than it's great. We do. It's um, certainly better than uh, uh, what is it? The Germans? Holland. Oh, they're kind of no. Oh wait, Heineken's Holland. Brewed in Holland. That's what it says. Oh man, dude, learn your beer. Disappointed. Anyway, um. I wanted to say, so sometimes with our events, we don't know like what's going to land. So if you have an idea for something you'd like to see at your comic book store, let us know. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, we got one. Beyond ulterior uh, appearances or whatever, we don't really know what we're doing. Oh, yeah. You know, no, we're we're kind of winging this. this I was a philosophy go. major so, in college, yeah. so I know only the questions to ask, uh, not the answers. Tom wants to know if we ever do board or card game demos. Um, we do an open game night on Mondays in LaGrange. We do want to start doing uh, board and card game demos. Uh, gaming is something we got a little bit of away from for reasons that are not important to go into publicly. But um, needless to say, we want to bring it back. And uh, I would love to do game and card, uh, board and card game demos. I keep. I had to do it just to find people to play Risk with me. I know, I love Risk! No one ever wants to play, but everyone's so willing to play Monopoly. And Monopoly sucks. No one likes Monopoly. But <laughs> Risk is, like, impossible to get anyone to commit, you know, seven hours of their life. I, uh, yeah, I love Risk. I will play Risk with you anytime. It has, uh, my cousins and I play all the time, you know, those that have survived, because some cousins we don't talk to anymore because of Risk. But, uh... We, it's I, yeah. a harsh game. Anyone wants to play Risk with us, we'll do a Risk at this. In fact, we'll do Risk um, and, and during the day, and then we'll do our Phantom Shadow Marathon back to back. The same, the <laughs> same evening. Um, so uh, Philip Mearsbach tunes in at Philip, just the right moment. And welcome says, to the party. He goes, "Not a racist thing. I tune into this." Sorry, Phil. It's, sorry, it's sorry. Been, Phil. It's been downhill ever since you tuned in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Rob says we should break out the fancy beer, Old Milwaukee. No, oh, we don't. We're not that quite, quite so, that fancy. So, speaking of marketing, we were having some discussions about marketing terminology later, uh, which I'm happy to front to you in a moment. But the point of my story is, the the people behind Old Milwaukee are genius, and the advertisement slogan was, "For the beer to buy, when you're the one buying." Like the cheap oh, beer, yeah. right? They know yeah. they're the cheap beer, and they just roll with it. Hey, you know, so I got to say, uh, we went to Florida recently. Oh, yeah. And we bought um, beer, mm-hmm. as one is wont to do. Sure. In the grocery store beer, not like uh, – You brought like the, the store brand. No, 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 no. Like we went to the grocery store to buy beer to drink at the hotel later because it's cheaper. Cause boy. Disney dollars are hella expensive. a boy. <laughs> what I learned is – Beer is actually really cheap in Chicago, comparatively. Really? Like, I don't remember exactly the price of what we paid just for, like, Coors, but it was way more than we would pay here. And I told the Uber driver we had, I was like, we get a, a, a I think it's a 34-pack of cans of High Life. Right. At Jewel Osco, and it's twelve ninety nine. Absolutely. It's the champagne wouldn't, of wouldn't beers. wouldn't pay a penny more. It's the champagne of beers. And I guess it's almost double that down in Florida. And I don't know if Paul's still watching or he can, he can attest to that. Yeah, Paul, if you're out there, let us know. Paul Figueroa moved down there. Oh, Tom says, uh, uh, cores, the vegetable beef stew of beers. Yeah, I mean, when you're broke all the time, and, you know, it's like on, you got to go with cores. On Facebook, Danny points out we're doing a play test in June for a new game that Jason Peters created and that Danny did the art for. Oh, that's right. Jason won a copy of Magnificent a little bit ago. I feel like we're going to give away a third copy since we're in – uh, we're our, we might as well. We might as well right? We've got so um, many tickets. Jason's a backer, and he won a copy uh, in the first hour, and he um, apparently is doing a gamer play testing, which is cool. Philip Nearsbach says, so much rolling. I don't know what that means. Rolling. Um, yeah, I don't know what that means. Maybe God. he's rolling dice. You know, he's playing. Yeah. He's, you know. Yeah. He's rolling, hating, riding dirty. You know, I, I thought maybe he's just playing Magic the Gathering. That's I mean, possible. I don't know. Who knows? Is he rolling that game? I think, I think they have dice. Yeah. No, they don't. No. Uh, they, that's right. They don't. I don't know anything about Magic. A uh, guy wants to do Trivial Pursuit. Uh, Robert O'Neill wants to do Scattergory. I love Scattergories. I schooled my fiance and her whole family in Scattergories on Monday. Wow, is this something you want to brag about online? It, it was like a huge. I didn't mean to kick their butt so bad because I'm like, I want them to like me. Do but- you want a shovel to dig deeper into that <laughs> hole you're digging yourself? <laughs> Uh, Phil says uh, he's never heard of a thir- thir- uh, 34 pack of. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I think it's a 34 pack. I could be wrong, but maybe it's a 30 pack. But it's massive, and they're, they're cans, and it's, it's yeah. the best deal you can get. I promise you. 
Uh, Rob says everything within 30 miles of Rat World is super expensive. I think, yeah. I think Rat World. I think he's talking about Disney, and it's, it's a, a bit of a Rat World. Yeah, yeah, for Disney. No, it's fine. It's That's fair. Clever. <laughs> I, I dig that. Um, Danny, uh, Danny says something. This is quite a while ago. She said maybe once a month or once a very few months, we should do a Facebook live chat and just like talk comics, film and geek stuff. Was well, is Danny offering to partake in a live yeah, uh, broadcast? Yeah, it sounds like you're volunteering, Danny. Yeah. Cause if you want to get I mean, up I'm in here with us. super into it, you know, yeah. I'm definitely all about it. I would do this. I'm having fun with this. Uh, Craig's tuned in. Craig, good to hear hey, good to see you. Craig Bass. I missed you, Craig. I bet I'm wondering if you want to hang out soon. So Craig, if you want to, want to hang out and catch up, let me know. Um, so, uh, hold on. Guy says, uh, when they went down to Florida for family vacations, my dad would fill our trunk with booze to take down to his brother because it was so expensive down there. See, that's what I'm saying. It's Incredible. a lot cheaper up here. Incredible. And I, you know, I live in the city and you think like, oh my God, it's so expensive here. It's but worse. it's like, it's Disneyland prices right. in Chicago. That's what yeah. Disneyland charges for Budweiser. It's crazy. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, if you haven't pledged yet, we're going to pick another Kickstarter backer. Yeah, why not? And we're going to give away an autographed copy of Magnificent the Novelization uh, in the next half an hour. So if you have not pledged already, please do so. Steven and I are thinking about staying on live until we, we're 95% funded. I think so we were though. We were, yeah, but we're so close. So we're $118 off. So we think we might stay live until we hit our goal. I think we'll just increase it in like half an hour segments. And then when we run out of shit to say, I mean, when we run out of stuff to say, Right. Pull the plug. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. But you know, Stephen often says that he, you know, he's never going to run out of things to say. He stands by everything he says. Yeah. I feel like I have a lot of opinions. I have an opinion about everything. Christine says, if you pledge a second time, does it increase your chances of winning? Uh, so you actually can't pledge more than once. You can increase your pledge. But since we're picking backer numbers one through forty nine or one through fifty five, mine is Christine's number. Minus Christine's number. She doesn't Christine, get a pick because she can get this. She has stuff access to all the autographs she wants at home because we're engaged. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. I, I Thank had no you very idea much. you were yeah, engaged. I it. Yeah, that's right. Christine's my fiance. Um, so hold on. We've got some more shade being thrown. Uh, Danny says she can do that. She's got a burrito yes. call her name, so she's taking off for now. Craig says, is that LaCroix you're imbibing? Yeah, definitely LaCroix. LaCroix. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like the taste of your foot falling asleep, I think I read online. It's really good. Um, Phil says we're drunk. No, um, heavens no, Phil. Rob, this is, Rob this says is a we, program for the children, Phil. Rob says we need a vacation down to Tallahassee. What? Can't, can't beat the panhandle. I can't even read this. The panhandle. No, we got to keep it kind of no, clean. No, I don't know what it says. The taint of the state. Yeah. I thought it rhymed. It does. Taint of the state. <laughs> your, your box crying now. Phil, come over to Oakland and have a drink with us. I know you've got like two kids at home, but they can, they'll can they survive without you for a little bit. Come come here. I'll show you. You know what? Through. I got to say this is a, this will, not a weird thing, but this is a it's a it's a weird thing in the sense where it's like you are we are kind of watching people like grow up at the store. We are. You know no, yeah, totally. That is totally. weird to yeah. see like kids in high school now going away to college and coming back. Yeah. Like, uh, Tim Parzik, who used to work for us back in the olden days. Oh yeah. The that times. kid is of legal drinking age and is in college right now. He's twenty one. Like, he's knocking it out of the park. How have we not debauched him? Uh, I think he's away at college, if I'm not mistaken. Not too far. Road trip. Well, I mean, he's in DePaul, all right? So it's not that far. But I think he's like, he's living in dorms. He's, he's, he's away or he's not he's, away? He's going on to bigger and better things. But then, like, still having kids. You know what well, I mean? Oh, yeah, kids. yeah. Marco Garcia had kids. Right, uh, yeah. Coming up on a year, I think. In, no. Uh, it's May now, so June. Sure. His kid's going to hit one. It's just crazy to see. Yeah, and like my brother Nicholas was, it was seven years ago. Oh, I thought you were going to say your brother Nicholas, the 16-year-old, was going to have a kid. I was going to say congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he is engaged. No, he's, oh, yeah. No, he's, he's, he's I had no not, idea. No, he's not. He's not. I am, though. No, I'm congratulations. Yes, I had no idea. Yeah, I have a fiance. Uh, Christine says, uh, shout out to Peter. Long live Norm. Oh, Peter, is he on there somewhere? Do you remember Peter? He, Peter, Peter Forward? from D&D. &D. Yeah, yeah, Peter's awesome. Yeah, he played D&D with Peter. Peter's the best. Um, so, um, yeah, Norm was a uh, uh, kind of a – was he a gnome? Was he, he – was I don't like really think I person. ever knew the origins of – Norm Peter's was like a, he was like a Norm. halfling. We played Dungeons and Dragons every Sunday. At the he was the store. delight. That's all I remember. Peter is wonderful, and we can't. Everyone wait. should have a Peter in their life. Joe Pack is back. Joe Packovitz is back Joe in the Pack house. Yep. 
And uh, just Joe, since you're not you you tuned in and out, so you know we're staying live until we hit our our goal. So please, or nine thirty, or nine thirty, whichever comes first. Whatever comes first. Who could say? We're not scientists. And at nine thirty, we're gonna draw and give away our last copy of Magnificent. So, um, anyways, yeah, we really should get back on the the Dungeons and Dragons every Sunday because that was a lot of fun. I miss so, it. Yeah, it's a good team building thing. We we're in a city now, so you're you're in your element. That's my element. I feel like when we were yeah. never there when. When I was part of the yeah. group, because I would be just the boss of mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, I mean, we really need some help back because we are totally. Who's lost. running the game right now? Arundel's running the okay, game. Okay, right my friend maniac. Tim. Yeah, he's a, he's a crazy person, and he is constantly trying to make our lives difficult by putting us in situations it's, we cannot kill our way out. It's part of his charm. Yeah. I think. Yeah, he's constantly like, "There's a lot of guards there." There's like, there's like a hundred guards. There's there. like more guards. And I'm like, I can take a hundred guards. He's like, there's 200 guards. Phil Niersbach became backer 52. Hey, Phil. Thanks, we have Phil. 55 numbers written in this thing. Thank and you. if need be, I have more post -its. Did you say 5,500 or am I that? No, no, no. 55. 55. I might yeah. have misspoke. Yeah. So, Phil, you might win a copy Thanks, of. Phil. Much appreciated. And, Phil, sir. in case you missed it, we're giving away the novelization of Magnificent. Not the uh, the graphic novel that you have from back in <laughs> All right. If, no, Phil donated to shut me up. Oh, Yes. Fair, so fair enough. Fair enough. It's all right. Well, I'll just slowly back out of that. Stephen's gonna back out. Uh, Phil, you bought yourself thirty free Stephen free seconds. So thank you. In fact, we're gonna go ahead and add that pledge tier in there. All right, uh, Stephen free. Very good. Wow. So we we are just a hundred and fifty six. How do we go? No, I I got my. You're phone. not that good. At I don't math. math good. We're ninety seven percent. We only need three percent more. And we're there. We're going to be funded. Um, so, um, yeah, well, there are, everyone on Facebook is having a blast with this. Everyone's laughing. They're laughing their thoughts off. And meanwhile, on Twitter, crickets. So earlier in, in, in Twitter's defense, we don't really do Twitter, do we? We do. We have like a thousand Twitter followers. So do somebody's really? doing Twitter. We have Bri Brianna does Twitter for us. I'm now. kind of doing Instagram, but only kind of when like I remember to do it. You know? Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed. Yeah, Nicholas is doing a better job Nic at it than Nicholas me. is doing a very good job. But I, uh, yeah, I post occasionally. No, so. Yeah. Mm. Hey, uh, I know what some people might want to hear about. Um, do you want to talk? Um, uh, well, you probably don't know either because you haven't read the script yet. I, I could tell you a little bit about the next Magnificent. Do you guys want to know what's coming soon for Magnificent? Oh, it's good. I don't yeah. know about this. Um, so um, we're going to do a prequel to Magnificent. Danny is going to take the lead on on pencils this time. And um, we're going to do sort of a um, – very excited about this. The promise of Magnificent for me in the beginning was to see a superhero in the real world. And Magnificent goes, you know, off from that. Obviously, you know, there's flashbacks to this kind of dystopian future or flash forwards if you if you read the book, uh, read the graphic novel. So what I wanted to do with the prequel is I wanted to set it all here and I wanted to say what happens when a superhero comes up against the stuff that we're reading about in the news every day. What happens when a superhero has to deal with domestic violence? What happens when a superhero has to deal with, with gun violence in our schools. These are the questions that I want to know the answer to as a comic book fan. Because it is scary watching, you know, movies where Dr. Doom is going to destroy the world. But, well, it's scary watching movies with Dr. Doom in it because they suck. But not because Dr. Doom sucks, because those Fantastic Four movies suck. But what's really scary to me is, like, the news every day, right? So what... Uh, Tom Falker says Doom is the way, damn it. Yes, he is. But Tom, we've talked about this. He's never been done justice on screen. Um, oh, Rob wants to hear some recommendations for horror-related comic book stuff besides Walking Dead. Uh, I will oblige you in just a, just a moment, Rob. Stephen, uh, turn that over a little bit too. Some horror, horror comics. Some horror comics that isn't Walking Dead. <laughs> That's right. I'll do my best. Yeah. Um, so just to wrap up the Magnificent prequel is we are going to kind of see what happens when a superhero tries to deal with that. Right. What happens when a superhero deals with, you know, police violence and things like this? Uh, that's what I want to tackle. And we're going to do that through a very interesting character that we, we did an epilogue about. If you read the Magnificent graphic novel, there's four page bonus at the end that Danny drew called Magnificent uh, Prometheus. And in it, we are introduced to a character named Algernon Gordon. And Algernon is going to be um, a foil for the Magnificent, but I'm not treating him as the villain of the story. He's not the antagonist. Algernon is another protagonist. I want them both to be protagonists. Hold on, Christine comments, we have only $60 to go. Thank God Christine can do math because I can't. We have we have uh, a little less than, we have $56 to go and we'll hit our goal. So uh, we're going to stay live until we get $56 more. Um, 
uh, Joel asks superhero versus corruption. And yes, I kind of want to deal with, you know, and sadly, Illinois, Chicago, this is something that's very common in the news is, is political corruption. We want to see superheroes deal with that. So um, that's what the Magnificent Prequel is going to be about. It's going to be about him and this other hero, Algernon, and they're both going to be on the collision course. Friends uh, who are going to be uh, uh, forced against one another, but it's not because one of them is bad. And, and that's kind of the point of Magnificent was about choices and about choosing your reaction to the things that happened to you. But, but Adam, the Magnificent, he could have chosen other ones. And Algernon just might. So that's what I want to talk about in the Magnificent prequel. Um, so Joe Pakovitz has a horror recommendation for Rob. I highly recommend listening to Joe Pakovitz because he too. is yes. our comic book uh, historian. This guy yeah. knows everything about comic books. It's amazing. Yeah, and that's why he's a frequent, like, third. The, he's the third man on Caffeinated Comics. Yeah, if we good. had a third uh, man on the show, it is 100% Joe Pakovitz. So that for, guy for is... you CCH fans, Joe Pakovitz is the Rob O'Neill of, of Caffeinated Comics. Yeah, I, I, if that's, yeah. Yeah, because, because, so this is what I like about Call Classic Horror is it started with two guys who are brothers and then okay. Rob, Rob joins them later. And it was like when Captain America joins, joins the, the Avengers. Avengers. It all right, clicks. Yeah. yeah, and it's like now you can't imagine it without it. Right. But he wasn't a founding member or when Danny DeVito joined, it's all oh, like sunny in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. It all clicked. Yeah. Um, so uh, Joe has a horror recommendation for Rob. It's called Sapphire Spectre. Um, it is by a local creator named JT Malloy, who uh, did a signing at one of our stores, and he was at the Deadpool screening on uh, Saturday. And Sapphire Spectre is, Rob, the best way I can think to describe it is, what if a superhero had Freddy Krueger's powers and was like a superhero in Dream World? And it's very cool. I'm not sure uh, how widely released it is yet, but we can get you a copy. So definitely um, send me a message. I'll hook you up with JT, and we'll get you a copy of Sapphire Spectre. It's very cool. Um, other horror comics I like, you probably heard of this one was, uh, cause it got turned into a film 30 days of night. I love it. it, it the artist Ben Temple Smith has this very, um, ephemeral kind of uh, effervescent artwork. It's very impressionistic, very scary. I love the take on vampires. Uh, Danny Neal just joined in. Hey, what's um, up, Danny? Long time Dan to see Yeah, you. Danny, also regular from the LaGrange shop. Um, so, uh, 30 days of night is cool because in it, the vampires are essentially like indestructible. I love how tough the vampires are. And really the only thing that can kill the vampires is other vampires. Yeah, I never read it. I remember hearing about the concept and I think it's a great, like, it's a great uh, gag for vampires. It's like, why wouldn't you go to a place that is right. literally night for 30 days? Right, That's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, in Alaska. Yeah, so yeah. it's very cool. Uh, I, it is like pretty common now at this point. It wasn't always, but I'm glad it's kind of become this like juggernaut of indie comics is Hellboy. Oh, yeah, Hellboy, like, absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's probably some of the best comic book art. If if you know what you're looking at when you look at Hellboy comic book art, that is some of the best comic art out there. That's yeah. Mike Mignola is on point. And then when well, he's man. not drawing it, he's getting his equally talented guys to come in and draw it. Yes. So that I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're in a horror or like 1940s historian stuff or even yeah. like 60s, 70s, 80s. Hellboy's kind of around for generations. Um, just really cool occult, like Lovecraftian Absolutely. nonsense. Oh, it's awesome. I love it. Yes, I love Hellboy. Uh, the other one I was going to recommend was um, uh, Hack Slash by Tim Seeley, yeah. who we just had to a signing at the store. And Hack Slash is about like, what if the survivor girl in one of these horror movies kept running around and kicking horror movie monsters' asses? And um, that's kind of the my understanding of hack slash very popular indie comic gone mainstream because it's so cool and tim seeley's a really cool dude so we were pretty lucky to have him at the store uh joe pakovich wants to throw out monstrous horror plus D, yeah that's a new one plus saga and gorgeous art yeah yeah we actually monstrous. like cannot keep that book on the shelf in the grange i don't Look know how it. it does in oak on here but uh yeah i think there, that there book is that incredible too. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so if you guys do have um, other uh, horror recommendations for Rob, throw them out there. If you guys have ideas for us, questions for us, things you want to see at your store, we are less than $60 away from our Kickstarter goal. So I'm still committed to, to staying on. We yeah, were, I mean, it's 930, but, well, you know, we'll go 15 more minutes. Yeah, what the, what the hell? You know, and, and the average Kickstarter pledge, by the way, site-wide, the average pledge is $50. So we're about oh, one wow. backer away from uh, – 
from hitting our goal. And when we get our last back, we're going to give away our free one. Um, Rob O'Neill says he's going to check it out for me, but I know, I know his feelings on Josh Hartnett. And yes, I do. Um, don't, oh yeah, that's right. He was he in, in the movie. 30 days a night. Yeah. Whatever happened to Josh Hartnett? Oh. When was the last time you saw that dude in the movie? Now I'm worried because I don't know if he's okay. <laughs> Does anybody know what happened to Josh Hartnett? Anybody out there knows hey, Josh? To be honest, please? we don't. I don't care that much. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah that was true. like a dude I that's forgot true. existed. Yeah, I, don't, I don't care that much. That's true. Hmm. Did you ever see the movie he did? It's um, Lucky Number Eleven. I did not. I heard it's good. It's actually a pretty good movie, and I think Bruce Willis is in it. And I am having a hard time remembering what it's about, but visually, it was like a very interesting movie. Really? But I'd like to see it. It yeah. was like so far down the ladder of things to watch. <laughs> Shout out to Gino. Gino just tuned in. He's a, a, a regular at my trivia nights at Hollywood Boulevard. I host trivia there once a month for uh, uh, local charities. And um, Gino always shows up with his team. I thought this was speed dating. So ha- shout out to Gino. He also writes. His uh, team is called I Thought This Was Speed Dating. Yeah, That's a great a good name, name for right? a trivia team. Yeah, right. And they're all really nice. And a lot of them shop at the store, even the ones who live kind of far away. Um, he also um, writes reviews for us now on our blog. Josh Hartnett has been in Penny Dreadful for the last two years, has three movies in post-production now. So he's still All right. working. Yeah, Josh Hartnett's still Good kicking ass and taking names. Uh, meanwhile, we're still we're still trying to get that last $60. So it sounds we're like- doing We're doing our best. We're, we're doing not fine. Josh Hartnett. We're not Josh Hartnett. You know, I'm not that good looking. So. Anyways, um, so the beer's starting to go to my head. Uh, let's go back to um, comic recommendations. What are you reading these days? Uh, so Jason Aaron just started his new Avengers run. Mm. Not new Avengers, just Avengers. Just Avengers. Uh, that's been excellent. If you haven't been reading Jason Aaron's run on Thor, you're wasting your time. You should totally <laughs> be all about that book. It's amazing. Um, that's been really great. i um, excited. Black Panther number one launches on Wednesday. That should nice. be pretty good. Yeah. Um, I I haven't been liking uh, this book, and it's only because it's sitting right here. But uh, <laughs> Mark Wade is writing Captain America again. I'm a big Mark Wade fan, but I, I he's love, a figure of controversy. I love Mark Wade, and I love that he's a figure of controversy. But this is not a great comic book, <laughs> and it's crazy because Mark Wade's written some of our favorite comics of all time yeah. but that's just i don't i don't know what's going on with that book it's just it's not landing and i know phil neiserbach if he's still watching is a big cap fan and uh that's like our favorite book to hate I'm right now i'm pretty sure his name is neersbach yeah all right <laughs> anyway uh, i wouldn't correct you except that he's watching and so is kurt schmidt remember kurt yeah what's up yeah, kurt? Hi, kurt another Good guy a long time to see yeah so, uh, yeah, it's amazing. There's been kind of a rotating lineup of, of viewers at home. But we've been pretty steady at uh, about a dozen at a time, so that's pretty cool. Um, so for those of you just tuning in, we're going to give away a third and final autograph. Oh, we were going to do that four minutes ago. ago. We were going to do that four minutes ago, but, you know, we've got a couple of people who just tuned in. So let's give it five more minutes, and then we're going to give away a copy of this to a lucky Kickstarter backer. So if you have not pledged yet, um, please do so. We're going to give away uh, a, a copy to backers 1 through 55. We're at 52 backers right now. Um, we're only $60 away from our goal. We're right there. Uh, hey, Kurt says, Hey, what's up, Kurt? Um, so yeah. So, um, for those of you watching, if you haven't pledged yet, uh, please do. And you can win a copy of the, the book on top of the great rewards that you're going to get. So, um, yeah, uh, I think we're hit, starting to hit that point where we're running out of things. To, this is a great time to pick the, to pick the winner, the winner of the, let's do it. Yeah, let's you know do what? It. Let's do it. Well done, Steven. It's what I'm here for. We're a team. All right, some of these are sticking together, so remember, you gotta pull them apart. Yeah. I let Stephen have a box of paper and they end up sticky. More not, I don't know that. What do you What do you it's mean? A dirty joke, I'm trying to make. Yeah, no, no dirty jokes for the kids. How many you got in your hand there? Is that, that's one. All right, okay. you good. All right, and the winner is backer number fifteen. All right, let's see who back. What is it was like in the top twenty over here? Well, before we identify that guy, Casper has something to say, and I always I always stop when Guy Casper has something to say. He says Rough Riders, historical fiction at its best. Teddy Roosevelt, Harry Houdini, Annie Oakley, Thomas Edison, Battle and Joel Jackson, and in the newest series, H.P. Lovecraft. That sounds awesome. That does sound awesome. Wow, I'll have to look that up. That. I wow. tried reading. I didn't try reading. I did read it. There was um. I got to look it up who read it. I grabbed it off the shelf the other day at LaGrange. It's The Five Fists of Science. 
Uh, it, it it sounds a lot awesomer than it was. It wasn't great. Sounds pretty awesome. And it was like Nikola Tesla and um, Ernest Hemingway, maybe. <laughs> Probably Birch butchering this. It was like five dudes, sure. and they built like a giant robot, and they fight somebody, J.P. Morgan or something. It was definitely not happening. And uh, it wasn't great. This book... Guy Casper's recommending sounds like a better version of what I was looking for when I read that book. I think that's a very good description. Yeah. Uh, quick shout out to Anthony. He says, thanks for the Deadpool event. Loved it. Glad you were there, Anthony. Hey, Anthony. that's awesome. Yep. Still haven't seen it. And you know, the awesome thing about the awesome thing about Deadpool was we had a customer show up dressed as Deadpool, head to toe, yeah. in an awesome Deadpool costume. And everyone was like, hey, good job inviting Deadpool. I'm like, I didn't invite I, I didn't plan that. But you know, it just goes to show you when you like hang out with cool people, cool stuff happens. When you invite cool people to a live stream, the stream is fun. When you build a place like a comic book store, cool people show up. So that's how I like to look at it. So back at number 15 was Missy Ellsworth, who those of you who are with us from the start know, Missy volunteered her time to do some gifts for our Kickstarter campaign, which was really cool. So Missy, thank you. I'm glad you are the winner. You're going to get an autographed copy of the Magnificent Novelization. So if you're one of the people who won tonight, and uh, um, uh, I probably should have written some of these names down. No, we have all the little tickets. We have the right numbers, here. though, but that's yeah. that's all that counts, right? We drew, we drew 15, we drew 21. What was the first number we drew? You lost the ticket? I didn't lose the ticket. Well, you Danny have... wrote it down. I'm just playing. Danny wrote it all down. Hey, we could just watch the uh, video back. We could just watch the video back. Yeah, we recorded it for posterity. We recorded it for posterity. That's what it's there for. That's right. Um, so... Um, Anyways, I think it's about time to time to wrap it up. I would have liked to have stayed on until we hit our goal. We're only sixty dollars away from our Kickstarter goal, so um, I would have liked to have hit that while we were live. But no big deal. And I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, I just feel like somewhere I'm hearing the Academy Award music telling me that we've like it's like you get off the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I leave them wanting more. You know, that's you always yeah the trick. Yeah, that's yeah. Get trick. out while the going's good. You get out, get out while the going's good. I like that. All right, guys. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful night. I had a blast. I hope you did. Steven, did you have a good time? Yeah. it's uh, I've never done this before. So It's it like a, a live caffeinated comment. It was interesting. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we went 36 minutes longer than an episode of Caffeinated Comics. So oh, we, we, hit our, we hit our ceiling. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Christine, for reminding me that it was backer number 12 who uh, was one of the winners. Oh, see, someone's paying attention. So one more time, I guess the winners were, just uh, so I don't have to rewatch the whole video, uh, backer 15, Missy Ellsworth, backer 21, uh, uh, Erica Velez, and uh, backer number 12, Jason Peters. Congratulations, you all won autographed copies of the novelization of Magnificent. And... Um, uh, so I appreciate that in to on top of the great rewards you got. And for those of you who didn't win, you know what? I've got so many more giveaways and prizes planned. If you pledge to this Kickstarter campaign, I promise you, you are in for a ride because this is not just a thing where you, you know, give us money and then like we go away. Like I've got fun stuff planned. You're part of something fun that I've been planning. It's this like 30 day party because if you just like – you know, for you Costner fans out there, if you build it, they will come. Doesn't apply to Kickstarter, right? If you build it, no one will come. It'll just sit there. But if you're out there doing things like this, doing things like giveaways, um, we've got – I'll just give you one last tease. We're giving away a hand-drawn uh, cover to Avengers of Thanos drawn by Corey Hampshire, who is a regular guest at our store and is now the official artist on Youngblood for Image. And Corey did this hand-drawn – um, uh, cover and we're going to give that away in a contest as well it's awesome hand colored it's super cool and how do the folks at home win that well i'll tell you how it's going to go live in another day or so um but we're going to have a, you have the ability to share the campaign and, and share it through twitter or facebook whatever and every time you share you are entered to win again and again this original artwork from a professional comic artist this Thanos cover. I, I wish I had one to give away to everybody, but I only have the one and we'll run it for a week or two. And, and just by, you know, and if you've already shared it, it's okay. You share it again. You don't have to get any new backers for us just by sharing you're entered to win. You'll be able to enter repeatedly to increase your odds. Um, so that's something we're going to give away. And uh, I've got plenty more stuff just like that. Plan. Um, thank you all very much. And uh, good evening. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs>